uh, going to be, you know, going to be a tough game here for Alchemist based on you know what we were talking about. Uh, and he's actually just Jaraxxus in there too. I didn't actually notice that before. Yeah, Jaraxxus is a card that a lot of people have been cutting lately. Yeah. Because they want a favorite in for more utility. But yeah. I, I was I was watching Savit's stream a little bit, and uh, we were kind of touching on Jaraxxus being in the deck, and he told me that. Jaraxxus has won him so many games that are unwinnable that he is it. reluctant to cut Jaraxxus okay. because it's won so many games. He's, he's okay with accounting for it as a dead card in a lot of matchups because in so many matchups, when you guys go the full distance on trading removal versus minions, Jaraxxus recovers that position. So outside of a threat of being bursted down from 15, Jaraxxus single-handedly takes over the game. Yeah, Draxus is, is a very powerful card, but it has completely fallen out of favor. I, I literally never see it, ever. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I saw Draxus played on ladder. Well, one of the reasons you never see this, it is this because... This start is so brutal. This is a brutal start, too. Yeah. So four damage coming across the board. This... And um, then next turn, he can play the 2-1-1, one, one, the 2-1 mana cost. Right. He's going to have a double knife juggle. Um, I mean... He, he can't soul. He can't, he can't Hellfire. What can yeah. he, next, next is, turn, he basically has to Hellfire. Right. This is, this is sort of what this deck does, though. So you look across the board. Seven potential damage coming out. Wow, that's a pretty big risk there. If he just runs that Molten Giant, I don't think he's going to win this game. So, yeah. um, what, what I want to touch on, the reason you never see Jaraxxus, by the way, is because if you Soul Fire with Jaraxxus in your hand, you always discard Jaraxxus. <laughs> Anyone who plays Jaraxxus knows that. Uh, but coming across this board, the Hellfire is going to come out next turn, but now Alchemix is in a position where he doesn't really want to attack because he's in, he enables Molten Giants, yep. but he doesn't have an option because, again, a lot of his reach is just lost. This Big Game Hunter is pulling a lot of white here. But I don't, I don't, if you have a big game hunter, I feel like you're supposed to attack with these minions to put pressure on your opponent's life. Mm -hmm. Yep, well, I mean, he did. He did attack in, in the end. No, he left him at 18 health. He, that was after attacking, though. Was that after attacking? Yeah, that was after attacking. Am I crazy? Yeah. You can on the, look on the left side. You can see the, uh, see the. Uh, okay, I'm insane. Ignore everything I just said. Yeah, the two. The two He's gonna go for enabling Molten Giants next turn. Yeah. So I'm just an idiot. Ignore what I said. Oh, Hellfire's got to come out here. I mean, it's, it's fine. But anyway, he is being put down to um, to 11 HP off the back of that because the two, um, the two G proc there. So I mean, he can. You have to hold. Dark Dark Dwarf has to come down here. 100%. Yeah. So and this is a pretty turn, unlucky turn for Savitz, I think. But next turn, he has nine damage. But here comes the Molten Giant. He has the Taunt to enable that. And, I mean, next turn, he could even face this Manipulator. So this is, this is kind of rough. Yeah, the, I think the biggest thing to note is that, again, Alchemix has um, this big game hunter in his hand. Yeah. So he needs to play this Blood Mage in addition to this to get a Taunt up in case yep. his opponent has got some way to remove this. Gotcha. Which we know he does. Wow, power overwhelming. That's... Oh my gosh, he's so short of lethal. He's just right oh. there. This 1-1 one, one taunt is critical to this position because otherwise he would just be dead. Yeah, he would be dead. I think he's dead next turn though, unless he can pull off uh, some sort of a miracle here because he has Doomguard power overwhelming. He has the soul fire as well. I mean, you know, high chance of, uh, high chance of stuff getting discarded, right. but still, um, you know, you get one or the other. It can be pretty brutal, man. I mean, look at all the damage sitting on the board though. There's nine damage sitting on the board. I mean, you're basically forced to Soul Siphon here, but Soul Siphon uses your whole turn, doesn't really develop the board at all. I think 14 HP, so he's gonna get 14 HP, and okay. Oh, jeez. Do you just do you just do guard and, and pray that you you don't just you don't lose the power overwhelming? This is this is a really tough spot. Because that would be here. five. You could do 10 damage if you don't discard the power overwhelming. You could do nine damage if you don't discard the Soul Fire. Well, one thing he could do is he could really yolo here and play this Soul Fire and oh, hope he God. discards his Flame Imp. That's like so ballsy, man. I, I'm not opposed to that play, because 33% of the time he just wins the game outright. Yeah, but if you discard the Doom Guard, then you're just the saddest person in the world. I, I think it's a risky you to take. He's honestly. going for it. Let's see. Oh, oh my, my god! Gosh. <laughs> a huge play from Alchemix. <laughs> I like it though. And that's gonna be lethal. Alchemix is gonna take this 3-1 on the back with 33%. <laughs> Frankly, I don't think that that's a bad play because it, uh, turn no. seven is really critical coming into yeah, this. Yeah, that's, that's hilarious. It's, that is just. Uh, it's, <laughs> it looks really lucky, and it is. It is but really it's, lucky. It's a